Tess, the transiting exoplanet survey satellite, launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on April 18, 2018. I am super excited about this, and you should be too. The primary goal of TESS is to discover planets smaller than Neptune that transit bright stars. We plan to find a lot of small rock and ice planets covering a wide span of orbital periods, and even some around the habitable zone of their star. TESS is expecting to catalog thousands of exoplanet candidates, with 300 estimated to be earth size or super earth size. In comparison, Kepler has found almost 4,000 confirmed exoplanets and 4,500 candidates. To date, 927 of those are thought to be terrestrial, meaning they have a solid rocky surface like Earth. In addition to the transit method, TESS will acquire full-frame images of the entire 24 by 96 degree field of view every 30 minutes. From this data, it is expected that over 20,000 additional exoplanets will be discovered, most of which will be gas giants. This two-year mission will be the first ever space-borne all-sky transit survey, the first year mapping the northern hemisphere and the second mapping the southern. It will survey 200,000 stars, most of them main-sequence dwarf stars, with four wide-field optical CCD cameras. This is a Cygnus constellation. TESS will survey over 90% of the sky and look at planets within 200 parsecs, whereas Kepler looks at planets that are hundreds to thousands of parsecs away. All of the yellow here is where Kepler has looked at, and all of the blue is where TESS will look at. That's an area 400 times larger, which is really exciting because the technology in TESS is better since Kepler launched back in 2009. But don't think TESS is necessarily a replacement for Kepler. Kepler looked at one little piece of the sky to find out if the transit method would even work. TESS is a whole sky survey with a method we now know works. It's a serious upgrade using lessons we learned from Kepler's proof of concept Plus, Kepler is more deep field, while Tess is looking at closer targets that are terrestrial. But they both use the transit method. If you don't know what the transit method is, it looks for dips in the light from stars when a planet crosses in front of them in our given line of sight, as seen here. Transit photometry looks at how much light an object puts out at any given time and tells us a lot about a planet. For example, we can figure out a planet's size based on how much of a dip in light a planet causes in its star. Using this method, TESS will create a catalog of thousands of exoplanet candidates, and then ground-based follow-up observations will confirm or deny that they exist. TESS is an exoplanet scout of James Webb Space Telescope, so after it finds all these prime candidate exoplanets, the James Webb Space Telescope will hone in on them in 2020 once it launches. Because of these follow-up observations, for the first time we'll be able to study the masses, densities, orbits, and atmospheres of a large amount of small planets, including some rocky worlds in the habitable zones of their host stars. There will be open and public data releases every four months, making TESS a people's telescope. So yes, you and everyone you know can make efforts to study these new planets. The Kepler mission has found so many awesome exoplanets that have enlightened our view of the universe and have opened our eyes to so many possibilities out there. And TESS will find even more. I cannot wait to see what we discover with TESS and what we learn further in the future about these exoplanets with the James Webb Space Telescope. If you're interested in exoplanets and habitability, hit that subscribe button because that is what I live for. I have a ton of astrobiology related videos on the way and also one covering the James Webb Space Telescope. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video everywhere so everyone can know we have some of the most amazing discoveries to look forward to. I cannot wait. <laughs> Thank you.